in uh, Jeremiah chapter number 31 and beginning in verse number 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left to the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. The Lord hath appeared, of old, appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth to the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, the planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. And so that's reading six uh, verses in uh, the book of, of Jeremiah. And before I get in uh, to the passage, we're going to be looking at verse number three. And we're going to, and good Lord, uh, by the help of the Lord and, and His will, we'll be preaching uh, just a little bit on what we were singing about a while ago, talking about that love. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of folk that never spend any time in the Old Testament. They think that the Old Testament is not for them. And there's preachers that don't preach in the Old Testament, and I have to confess that uh, in late years I've not preached in it near as much as I used to, and by the help of the grace of God, I'm going to change that and try to do better on that. We need the entire Word of God, and in the entire Word of God is for all, for the for us, amen, the, uh, the church, the Old Testament, is for us as well as the new. Now, I do not believe in misappropriating the promises of God to the nation of Israel and, uh, and taking the promises of God and applying them to the church. That's not what we do. But, beloved friend, there are things and there are, uh, that, that are applied to the church and there are applications that can be made and help that can be had for the child of God, for, the, for, the, for, the, for a member of the body of Christ in the Old Testament, and all the Word of God is for us, my beloved. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, he said, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and His prophet for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, of, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And then Romans 15 and 4, he said, Whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning uh, that we through comfort uh, of the scriptures might have hope. Uh, and then 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, they were written uh, for our admonition upon whom uh, the ends of the world are come. So the, so the Old Testament uh, is for you and I just like the New Testament. Uh, in Acts chapter 17, verse number 11, the Bible t uh, tells us these, that is the Bereans, uh, were more noble than those that were in Thessalonica for they searched the scriptures daily uh, whether these things were so. Uh, and what do you think, my beloved, uh, amen, that the Bereans were searching? There was only one a book uh, of the New Testament according to traditional dating uh, that had been uh, written by this time, and that was the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, amen, Mark, Luke, John, and, 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 and all like that. And, and Paul's epistles had not yet been written. So they were searching, amen, the Word of God, the Old Testament, amen, to say whether these things were so. So, beloved friend, all the Word of God is applicable to us. But we want to look this morning in verse number 3 of Jeremiah chapter 31, where he said, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I grown thee. I'd like to preach to you just a little bit this morning, my beloved. Amen. On the thought, amen, of I have loved thee. That's what God says unto me and he says unto you. Amen. Thank God. He has declared his love for us. John chapter 3 and verse 16. That most well-known passage. 
passages, my beloved, uh, and we quote it just uh, just about every preacher uh, uh, quotes it just about every time that he preaches. Uh, amen. For God so loved the world uh, uh, that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, amen. John 3 and 17, for God uh, uh, sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, uh, uh, but the world through him uh, uh, might be saved. Jesus, uh, God did not send, uh, amen, Jesus into this world to condemn the world, uh, but to make a way, my beloved, uh, amen, that the world, uh, those that are lost uh, and undone without God might have a way of escape, uh, that they don't have to go to that awful place that's called hell. I'm glad he loved me this morning, uh, and thank God because of his everlasting love, uh, and because I embraced his love, uh, and because I received his love this morning, uh, amen, I am saved by the grace of God. Thank God I don't have to go to that awful place that's called hell and one day after a while I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. When I die. Thank God. He said I have to love thee with an everlasting love. I thank God. I'm glad that he loved us. Amen. Beloved friend. And the Bible tells us. Amen. John said in 1 John 4 and 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God has in his only begotten Son uh, into the world that we might live through him. Uh, amen. And then again we're told, uh, amen, in Romans 5, uh, 5 7 through 8, uh, he said, For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Uh, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Uh, but God committed this love toward us uh, in that while we were yet sinners. Uh, amen. Christ died for us. I uh, uh, thank God. Uh, hey, listen, my beloved friend, we might ask Jesus. Uh, amen. And it might have been asked of him, uh, Amen. How much do you love me, Jesus? Uh, I thank God that he would have spread his arms uh, and he would have said this much, my beloved friend. Uh, and he cried out, Father, it is finished. Uh, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Uh, and he gave up the ghost. He finished the work, my beloved. Uh, amen. The culmination of his love for me uh, and for you. Uh, and that he died uh, on the cross of Calvary. He died the sin death, beloved. Uh, Amen. That I was worthy of and you were worthy of and if we had what we deserve this morning, amen, each and every one of us, including this preacher, I would be in hell right now. And not only for what we did before Jesus saved us, amen, but for what we've done since. If we got what we deserved, I would be in hell. But thank God I'm so glad that when justice called, amen, mercy answered. Why? Because he said, I have loved thee uh, with that ever everlasting love. What a blessing that is. Yes, <coughs> Amen. I'm glad that he loved us this morning. Amen. What a blessing that is. You pray for me this morning. Amen. Notice here what he said the Lord. Amen. Hath appeared of old. Notice that. Amen. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, amen, God don't just love us now, and he didn't just love us the night that we were the day that we were saved by the grace of God, amen, but God has loved us of old, my beloved friend, I thank God he loved us, my beloved, before the foundation of the world, amen, before ever the world's were, God loved us, and the Bible tells us, my beloved friend, in Ephesians 1 and 4, he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Thank God First Peter 1 and 2. Amen. He said elect according to the foreknowledge of God through sanctification of the spirit and the obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Christ. Thank God. And Jesus Christ in Revelation 13 and 8 is described as a lamb slain. Amen. Before the foundation of the world. Amen. God looked forward in time, my beloved friend, uh, way back in eternity past, God the Father, uh, amen, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, uh, I look forward in time, uh, and saw me, and saw you, uh, amen, and our worst in sin, uh, and said, declared that he loved us anyway, uh, and Jesus came, uh, and bled and died for us uh, on the cross of Calvary, what a blessing that is, I'm glad my Lord loved me, he said, I have loved thee, 
with an everlasting love again. Amen. Scarcely for a righteous man would one die. I yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Amen. Christ died for us. I want to tell you, Mom and Dad may have loved you. Amen. Grandmom and Granddaddy may have loved you. Amen. Brother and sister may have loved you. Amen. That's how son and daughter may have loved you. Amen. Your grandchildren may love you. But I'm here to tell you, nobody, amen, ever loved you like Jesus loves you. Amen. What a blessing that is. He declares, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Thank God, what a blessing that is. Well, I'm so glad that he made his way. Amen. Up Golgotha's rugged brow. And there hung between the heavens and the earth for me and for you. Well, listen, my beloved friend. I thank God he declares greater love hath no man than this. And that a man lay down his life for his friends. And he went on to say, you are my friends. If you have done whatsoever, amen, I have commanded you. Well, listen, my beloved friend. God's love for us was so great. And when he looked down and he saw blooded, amen, that we were lost and undone and headed for that devil's hell. And God knew that we could not save ourselves. And God being a holy God and a righteous God and a God of justice demanded holiness of us, of which we could not meet, my beloved friend. So therefore he sent his darling baby boy into this world, my beloved friend, amen, to live a sinless life for me and a sinless life for you. Amen. That we could not live and go to the cross of Calvary and die an intercessory death for us. Amen. On the cross of Calvary taking my place and your place on the cross of Calvary. What a blessing that is. And he declares he who knew no sin was made sin for us how that we might, uh, might be made of uh, how the righteous of God in him. Uh, oh, listen, my beloved friend, as he was brought up, uh, amen, to Pilate, and Pilate examined him. Uh, amen, he went out before the people, uh, amen, and he declared, I find, uh, amen, no fault in him. Uh, and he called for a, uh, for a, a basin of water, uh, and he washed his hands, and he said, I washed my hands uh, of the blood of this just person. And, uh, well, I want to tell you, it didn't do away with him his guilt, but bloody friend, he was right when he declared, I find I no fault in him. I want to tell you, I can't find any fault in him this morning. Amen. He's a perfect Savior. He loved us, thank God, with an ever everlasting love. What a blessing that is. He said, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me. Saying, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Notice this. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I want to tell you, honey, he would have just still been a righteous God. He would have still been a just God. He would have still been a holy God. If he had left you and I steeped in sin and hit the devil's hell and left us where we were. Thank God. But I'm so glad. Amen. He didn't leave us there. But I'm glad he drew us by his everlasting love. He drew us to himself. No, listen, he's still calling the people today. And the sad thing about it is the vast majority are turning him away. But all oh, he's still calling them today, my beloved friend, as he did in Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor the heavy laden, and, 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 and I will give you rest. I take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and hard, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Oh, I hear people say it's hard to live for the Lord. I'm going to tell you this morning, honey, amen, it's hard are not to. Amen. I don't know what people do without God. I don't know what people do without Jesus. I couldn't make it from day to day without Him. I mean, I thank God that whatever comes my way, I've got somebody I can go to that cares about me and wants to share my heavy load. What a blessing that is. 
He said, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Jesus wants to carry your load this morning. He don't want you to carry it by yourself. He wants to take it from you and help you to bear your heavy load. What a blessing that is. Oh, and he says, come unto me. He said, I have drawn thee. Amen. He said, I have loved thee uh, with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness uh, have I drawn thee. Thank God he drew us. Uh, amen to himself. Uh, what a blessing that is. Uh, amen. John 6 and 37. He said, all that the Father giveth me uh, I shall come to me. Uh, and him that cometh to me uh, I will in no wise uh, amen cast out. I'm here to tell you this morning. Uh, Amen. If you come to Jesus, amen, Jesus has guaranteed you that he will not cast you out. If you'll come to him and receive him, he'll save you and he'll be your friend unto the very end. What a blessing that is. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. But he said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. No, oh, he told those men as they were saddened and they were burdened uh, and their hearts were full of fear in the upper room because they didn't know what was happening uh, and they didn't understand what the Lord was doing. Uh, amen. And what he was saying to them. Uh, but he told them, he promised them, uh, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. Uh, but he said, I will. Uh, amen. Come to you. What a blessing that is. Aren't you glad when your heart's heavy? And you're burdened. Amen. And you have pain. And you have sorrow. Maybe in the midst of the night you're laying on your bed. And your mind is troubling you. But oh, in the, in, the, in the wee still hours of the night. Amen. Jesus Christ will come to you. Amen. In the person of God the Holy Ghost. And He'll bring a comfort. And He'll bring calm. And He'll bring peace unto your heart and to your soul. What a blessing that is. Amen. You remember the first thing that the Lord said to the disciples after that He rose from the dead when they were waiting on Him in the upper room like He had told the ladies to tell them to do. Amen. And, G and, the, and the doors and the windows being shut up. Amen. Jesus appeared in the midst and He said, Peace I be unto you. I want to tell you, you can have peace in the midst of the storm today. I mean, if you have Jesus and know how the love of God in truth, what a blessing that is. He said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Oh, what a blessing that is. Jesus tells us, my beloved, in His precious Word, He said, no man, hey man I don't believe in easy believism. I don't believe you can come just any time you want. Amen, beloved friend. Jesus declared, No man I can come unto me except my Father I which sent me and draw him. But you know what he promised, my beloved friend? John 12 and 32, he said, And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. There's not a human being upon the face of the earth my beloved friend, nor, or, nor will there ever shall be. Amen. I'm talking about a regular human being. Amen, my beloved friend. But what God won't one day draw him and Jesus or her and Jesus won't one day draw him or her to himself. But it's up to us when we hear the call to come unto him. Know oh, how sad it is. He said, The Lord hath, hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Oh, it's so sad, my beloved, that so many won't come today. There's never been many. Amen. It's always been just a faithful few. 
It, even when the churches, my beloved, were full back in the, amen, 40s and 50s and 60s, amen, it was still just a remnant then. But my beloved friend, it's grown even less in the day and the age that we're living in because He's calling and He's drawing and He's showing His love. But so many are, are rejecting Him and won't come to Him. Jesus in John 5 and 40, you go back and read the whole chapter and you'll find that He's talking to the Jews that rejected Him. But John 5 and 40, and he, he told them, and you will not come to Me that you might have life. They could have had life. Amen. They, were, they had been looking for their Messiah, my beloved friend. Amen. Uh, uh, from the beginning, they had had the promise. Uh, amen. That one day, uh, how the Messiah was going to come. Uh, how they had that promise, my beloved. Uh, amen. And when He was right in front of their face, they rejected Him. Amen. Brother Steve was talking about the Jews. And I had two Jewish friends. I've lost contact with them now, but one of them when I went through basic, the other one when I was in the Tennessee National Guard. Amen. I don't know whatever happened to the one that was, I was in basic with. I never saw him again or heard from him again after that. But the buddy that I had that was in the Guard, he married some woman from Australia and moved there. So I don't know what's happened to him either. But both of them, my beloved friend, they just could not see that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They were blinded. They still have that veil that he was talking about, that, that Moses came down and the glory of God so shone in his face that they could not bear to look upon him. And he put a veil on his face. And it symbolizes the veil that's over their heart to this day. And their spiritual eyes are blinded. Amen. Brother Steve talked about how that in the synagogues that they have a daily reading in the Bible in the Old Testament every day. And that's true for the vast majority of synagogues. They do have it. And, and all the synagogues all around the world that are in that particular group. Now there might be a few different groups that uh, schedule different ones at different times, but whoever's in that group, what we call a denomination among Christian churches, Whoever's in that group, they're all reading that same a passage of Scripture on the same day, and they read continuously through the Old Testament, except for one chapter, and it is the forbidden chapter in the vast majority of synagogues, and they do not read it. Hey Amen. I'm going to read it to you, just a little bit of it, my beloved friend. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plain, and as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. How we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him. And in the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before shears is done. And so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, and neither was any deceit in his mouth. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his safe seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul 
soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. I shall my righteous servant justify many. And they do not read in the vast majority of synagogues today. Isaiah 53, my beloved friend. And there was a lot of people that denied that Isaiah 53 was even a part of the Bible and claimed that Christians had added it later. But beloved friend, there's been a lot of things that wasn't so good that they found among the dead street sea scrolls. There's a lot of, amen, that bad stuff that was there. But there were some things that were good and some good manuscripts. And one of them was the Isaiah scroll. And, it, and it's very old. And it contained Isaiah 53. Amen. That promise that God was going to send that Messiah. Bloody friend. And God sent him. But yet the, and the Jews rejected him. And the world is still rejecting him. In the day and age that we're living in. Oh, listen, so many will not come to Him. Oh, I want to tell you, beloved friend, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10, He said, Of those who are going to one day receive the Antichrist, them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, Hey man, anybody that has to die lost and that dies lost and has to go to a devil's hell, anybody that's left behind, hey man, to suffer in the great tribulation through, hey man, the wrath of God poured out without mixture under the reign of the Antichrist, my beloved, it won't be because God didn't love them. It won't be because God didn't give them a chance. Hey man, it won't be because God didn't call them. It will be because they rejected him and rejected his son and it bled and died for them on the cross of Calvary and they a way of escape and that they wouldn't have to go to that awful place of poor men. Amen. All that they have to do is just reach out and receive the free gift of God. Amen. Just the simple gospel as Brother Steve talks about so much in Sunday school. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 2. For I delivered unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, amen, according to the Scriptures. Amen, Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 10. Amen, the word is nigh even in thy mouth and in thy heart, which is the word of faith which we preach, and that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe with unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I thank God for uh, Romans 10 and 13. Uh, and whosoever uh, I shall call upon the name of the Lord, uh, amen, shall I be saved, beloved. Amen. That means anybody and everybody that wants to be saved by the grace of God, amen, if they'll come to Him, a faith believer, He'll save them and He'll give them a home in glory one day after a while. What a blessing that is. So sad that they won't come. I'm getting ready to come to a close. I'm going to give you one more thing and then I'm going to come to a close this morning. Amen. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Oh, I want to tell you, God's love is an everlasting love. Amen. Hey Amen. There's been many a man. There's been many a woman that didn't want what happened to him. Maybe they, the, the man met a, met a woman. He fell in love with that woman. Or maybe that woman met a man. He fell in love with that man. And they cared so deeply for that woman or that man. Hey Amen. Oh, my, my beloved friend, they, they gave them their all. And they gave them all the love and all the care and all the compassion and all the attention that they could give them only to have that love spurned, cast aside, and have that woman that they loved so deeply not love them back and leave them. 
that man that they love so deeply, not love them back and leave them. I want to tell you, there's no guarantee. Just as great-grandfather Bishop brought mom in at the age of 14 years old, that's how old she was when she married my dad. I know they don't do that anymore, but they, they were still doing it in the 60s. Amen, a little bit. And she married my dad at the age of 14 years old, and my great-grandfather brought her in sat her down and told, and told her, said, now, Brenda, you know that this is forever. Amen. I want to tell you, folks, that is the intent of God. That's, God. that's the way God wanted it. Amen. As far as marriage is concerned, the perfect will of God, my beloved, is one man for one woman for one lifetime. But, beloved friend, in order to have that, you've got to have both people in agreement that they're going to obey God in that command. And there's people through no fault of their own have their heart crushed by the person that they love the dearest. And they walk away from them and some of them can't get over it and they wind up committing suicide because they look to the wrong source for comfort. Amen. And they don't understand that there's somebody that cares about them and that wants to take care of their heartbreak wants to bring them comfort. I want to tell you, beloved friend, amen, there's children that have grown up and their mamas, and, and, and a lot of times back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, these girls were talked into giving their children up, their babies up. And I've watched a lot of documentaries on it and I see the heartbreak of these people because they're wondering why did my mother give me up? Did she not love me? A lot, of, a lot of young girls were forced into it because they had gotten pregnant the way they, they ought not have. Amen. I want to tell you something, bloody friend. It was the will of God for that baby to be born. Amen. All those babies to be born. He said, Amen. before I formed them in the belly, I knew yes. them. Amen. Amen. But it's not always God's will how they come into the world. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, it wasn't God's will for David, amen, to uh, uh, look out on that rooftop and see Bathsheba taking that bath, amen, and sin for her and have her brought to him and get pregnant by him while that she was all, uh, while her husband, one of his most faithful captains, was off uh, uh, fighting in the battle. Later on, Set it up so that he was killed, though David didn't kill him directly. He set it up so that he was killed. That wasn't God's will. Well, I want to tell you something, beloved friend. God took something that wasn't God's will, and he turned it around, and he got glory out of it. Amen. Of Bathsheba was born Solomon. Amen. The wisest man other than the Lord Jesus Christ that ever walked the face of the earth and through his bloodline came the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, Savior of the world. Men and women may let you down. Amen. He asked a question in one place. He said, would a mother forsake her suckling child? And the answer is yes. There's been many that have. Amen. My wife had an uncle his wife, after their children, their children weren't very old at all. And she said, I can't deal with it anymore. You can have them. I'm leaving. And he left him. She left him. Amen. And she walked off and she left her children. Her little small children. And I don't think she saw them much of that any, again until they were grown. But I want to tell you, a mother may leave her suckling child, but God said, yet will I, he, he said the answer to that is yes. Yes, they will. But he said, yet will I never leave thee, I'm going to forsake thee, thank God. And you see, God is somebody, Jesus is somebody that will love you unconditionally and love you just like you are. Oh, somebody said, I just don't see how God could love me. Oh, I want to tell you, He loved me when I was yet unlovable. Amen. He loved us all. He knew exactly everything. You see, God knows the end from the beginning. He knew every time He was going to sin against Him. He knew every time He was going to fail Him. But He loves you anyway. Amen. Thank you. And He sent Jesus to die for me and for you. 
on the cross of Calvary. It's an everlasting love. Amen. John 13, 1. Amen. Said of Jesus as he was there in the upper room with his disciples, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Amen. Then again, John 17 and 3, as he's praying in the upper room, and he wasn't just praying for the disciples. And I, this is what I call the true Lord's Prayer. Matthew and Luke are examples of prayer. Jesus said in Luke, would you pray, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Till kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as this in heaven. He never intended you to recite that, by the way, as some kind of religious exercise like turning beads or handling a crucifix or making the sign of a cross. God never intended that. Jesus was showing us how we need to pray. In the true Lord prayer was in John chapter 17 in the upper room. Read it sometime. And he tells us in, in that passage there, he said, neither pray I for these alone. In other words, I'm not just praying for these, these that are going to be my apostles uh, that are with me here uh, in this upper room. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe through their word. That's me and that's you. Notice what he said, John 17 and 3, pray to the Father, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You want eternal life? You're going to have to know Jesus. You're going to have to respond to him. He has declared, he said, if you will believe that Christ died, for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And my beloved friend, believe that in your heart. Amen. Confess it with your mouth. And he said, you're saved and by the grace of God. That's how simple it is. Amen. But you've got to come when God calls. Amen. Because there's going to come a day, my beloved friend, that he's not going to call anymore. I'm going to read you one more verse of Scripture, passage of Scripture, and then I'm going to come to a close. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning in verse number 22. <coughs> How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And we're seeing that in the day and age that we're living in. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. But ye have said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. And therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. There's a warning and a promise in one passage of Scripture. God said, if you, if, you, if you fail to heed my call, if you fail to heed my warning, if you fail to heed my counsel, the day's going to come that you're going to call upon me and I will not hear you because you did not hear me. Amen. And he said, I will laugh at you in your fear. And he said, I will mock you in your calamity. But it don't have to be that way. Amen. Verse number 33, Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. I want to tell you, God loves you this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Hayes if he'll come back.